name, I will give them double honor. Rapantu Rapalisa Lebrentini Makoshata Beautiful Ashes Makunda Brasia Apantus Cabranda Leveni Masuya Antelebado Shatia Branda Lebreina Makusa Father, a new garment, a new garment, a new garment, a new garment, the garment of righteousness, the garment of peace, the garment of, of wisdom, the garment of illumination, the garment of joy, Rabalo Sapa. Mantu rababaya and telebre is shatia koza rapa and telebre in taba in teneme kuza rapatia a new garment, my God, a new garment, my God. Father, give KAC a new garment, give KAC a new garment, give KAC a new garment, a new garment, a new garment. Maroba shotea rapa and teliba anu mizuati brekunta labadosa. If I were you, I would pray my heart out. The God, give me a new comment. Give me a new comment. Give me a new comment. Even you and I know that you cannot wear the same clothes uh, without being washed. Uh. You and I know that you, if you wear one clothes without washing it, you begin to stink. Uh. How much more in the realm of the spirit? There are certain things you've worn for so long uh, and your life is so, is so misaligned. Uh. But tonight I want you to activate the blood. Rapa usereba ushapa repentini Mercy is speaking. Masonto Rebada Shatarapani Masotoya Bau Shantelebedosa. I strip off any garment that is not of God. I strip off every garment that is not of God. I strip off the garment of tiredness. I strip off the garment of weakness. I strip off the garment uh, uh, masutaba of failure. I strip off uh, every garment of impurity. I strip off every garment that is not of you, Jesus. Rapadosha, masuka palabadia, rapantus karabadosha pa, rentili vrazonde lebe isa, tuande repeni mashotea. I heard the Holy Ghost say uh, that let them activate the blood uh, and let them use the blood to cleanse their garment. That is what I heard the Spirit of God say. Uh, Repalusha tiria zata zuami na kantepe ishele bado sapa. Some of us come to church looking nicer, but it's only the physical clothes that look nicer. In the realm of the spirit, we are in pain. In the realm of the spirit, we are bitter. In the realm of the spirit, we go home and we cry ourselves to bed. It's a garment. Rapalu sapa. But today we strip it off. We strip it off. We strip it off by the blood of the lamp, by the efficacy of the blood by the potency of the blood by virtue of the blood of Jesus I take authority and strip off every garment every garment every garment that is not of any that is not of God anytime you want to go deeper there is something that pulls you back anytime you want to go deeper in God there is something that pulls you back it's a garment it's a garment it's a garment that has, has become a roadblock. Ah, strip it off, strip it off, strip it off, strip it off. God said to Moses, tell Aaron to strip off the garment. Masuni miki za rapantoza rapababa shelebre isa tu kabrandeli isa nati repe intalabadosha lepa usa katia ba andelebea the Bible says Jesus is coming for a bride whose garment is without spot and wrinkle it means even when Jesus comes there is a garment there is a garment there is a garment that we must wear makura patia but the Bible says it in First Corinthians fifteen the mortal shall put on immortality. Immortality will become a garment. So as long as you and I are here on earth, there is a garment we have on. But the Bible says, put on Jesus. Put on Christ. Put on Christ, which is your new nature. Rapatua, brentu kapande, brekete lepetunda, bruzini 
Rabadua, Rabadua Kapaya. I strip off every garment. I strip off every garment. I strip off every garment that is not of Jesus. Maropa Lusa, Branduska, Brantele Benemekusa, Rapakata le Presia Tuapa, Radadareva Suntaba. Any garment that has allowed Satan to accuse me, I strip it off. Any garment that has given Satan the legal right to accuse me, I strip it off. I strip it off. I strip it off. Somebody strip it off. Strip it off. Strip it off. Strip it off. Don't take it off. Strip it off. Strip it off. Strip it off. Masuka prasete. Be put on a new garment. Be put on a new garment. Be put on a new garment. Rapalo sapalia. Mantore brasia. Masuaka pantu saba. Celebra antelebea. Sua manakati antelebadosa. Tundabra antelebaya. Alusha antelebrasia. Put on Christ. Put on Christ. Put on Jesus Christ. Jesus is a garment in the realm of the spirit. Put on Jesus Christ. And strip off the garment of, of sin. Strip off the garment of, of lust. The garment of addiction. Rapalosa. Strip it off. Strip it off. The garment of, of gossip. The garment of bitterness. The garment of anger. Strip it off. 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 The garment of low self-esteem. Strip it off. Strip it off. The garment of lack of confidence. Strip it off. Strip it off. Rapakusa. For the Bible says the righteous shall be as bold as a lion. Masuna magunta. Repelosh kebrentua. Bano saliva untapa. Repelusa. The garment of stimidity. The garment of shyness, the garment of timidity, the garment of shyness, strip it off, strip it off the garment of I am not good enough strip it off, strip it off the garment of I don't know if I can make it strip it off, strip it off the garment of I don't know if it will, it will go well, strip it off, strip it off the garment of negativity strip it off, strip it off for with God all things are possible that is the garment we must put on Rapalusha Tayabadosa, Aranti Kapandua Kumania, Masuta Rabadosha, Reketiri Masotoya, Oh Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Amiku Jari Paluata, Rabanto Lebreketele Petisa, Abantu Sanamaya, a new garment for KSC, a new garment for KSC, the garment of a warrior, the garment of a warrior. The garment of a righteous man, the garment of a soldier, the garment of a militant, Rapaloske Preswata, Masunde Lebeusha, the garment of a priest, Rependu Zanamatua, the garment of a king, Shantele Bresia. We put on the garment, we put on the garment, Mazuani Matoya. Mantore Bababa, Celebre Isakatua, and Celebre Ishanta, Zonemekunta Braise, Velusha Tika Bantua. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Our garment will be pure. 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 Shereba Sutaba. Oh dear Christian, what garment are you having on? Oh dear Christian, what is your garment? What garment have you put on? The Bible says put on Christ. Put on Christ. Put on Christ. Put on Christ. He is the new nature that we have obtained. Rabba suya. Mantu reba antalapaya. Rebebebe isatua. Mantu reba isakatia. The Holy Spirit has not given me a go ahead to lift another prayer point. And so I want you to still tarry on this prayer point. To strip off every old garment and put on a new one. Put on a new one. Let us not be in a hurry for a new prayer point. Let us not be in a hurry for a new prayer point. It is not about the prayer point. It is about that prayer that has the ability to take effect. Father, give KAC a new, a new garment. A new garment, 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 a new garment. Rabalo Shatiriasa. Tandele Banu Shantua Rabba Usa. Manturebe is Shatiria Santa. Namasonto Rebadesha. No more the garment of weariness. 
No more the garment of tiredness. Rabanto rebado shata. Spiritual laxity. No more. Masure ba anta. Manto rebe isha braskiata. Zante lebe no shanta raba basua. Rebe ishante reba basua. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let us give it up for Jesus. For his blood, for his blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe strongly that certain garments have been stripped off. And a new garment has been placed on us. Amen. Garments are key, you know. You can see someone and you know what they are going through spiritually because of their spiritually and physically because of the garments they wear. And we can put on makeup and we can do all the things that we do to look nice. But it's the garment that would tell if our life is really intact or not. But we thank Jesus for his blood. We thank Jesus for his blood. Amen. I want us to pray and um, I want us to go to 1 Chronicles 12.32. Very popular verse. But as we are in the season of laboring, Give me the King James. Just let's let's stick with King James, please. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible says, and the children of and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their commandment. Amen. I want us to pray. Um, we are in the season of laboring, the season of persistence, perseverance, not giving up, not, you know, giving in, just pushing, having the nature of an ox, the spirit of an ox. I want us to pray for understanding. You know, there's one thing to labor and there's another thing to know what you are called to labor for and labor it according to the will of God. And so I want us to pray the Father, Lord, Give us understanding like the sons or the children of Issachar. Because they knew exactly, this is not anything, you know, wow. But it's a very simple prayer point, but it's ex extremely essential. Because you can labor, you can work, you can do things for God. But at the end of the day, Jesus can say, I don't know you. Or Jesus can tell, say that what you did were, were good. Everything you did was good. But that was not what you were called for. That was not what I wanted you to do. So the fact that we are doing doesn't mean anything. The fact that we are laboring is great, you know, it's great. But I want us to pray the Father, Lord, give me understanding to what I'm called to labor for. Give me that wisdom, that insight. Jesus knew exactly what he was called to labor for. And so even when there were times for him to rest, he said, I must go around about my father's business. Because he knew the business to which he was called. You know, he knew exactly what he had to do. So I want us to pray the father, even as we are in a season of laboring, may I not just labor, you know, anyhow. May I not just do anything because I feel like it and I think, okay, let me just do something to show that I'm doing. But I want us to pray that we will be men of, you know, understanding. We will know what to do. The Bible says they knew what Israel ought to do. There is so, it's, it's very specific. What They knew what Israel ought to do. Not they just told Israel to do. They knew what they ought to do. So I want us to pray that Father Lord, show me what I ought to do. Reveal to me what I ought to do. I must work, but what must I do? Paul said when he encountered Jesus, what must I do? So I want us to pray. The Father, Lord, show me what I must do. In this season, I must labor, but what must I labor for? Is it so winning or is it, you know, staying indoors and interceding? Or is it, you know, going out there and giving alms? Or is it rather cleaning or is it doing community service? Let us lift up our voice and say, Father, give me understanding. Give me understanding of the times. Give me understanding of the times. Give me understanding of the times. We will not just labor. We will not labor because that will be a labor that will be 
be in vain. Somebody's made a statement and said, if you are in the wrong lane, speed is not an advantage. If you are driving in the wrong lane, you may drive and drive and drive only to find out you got to the wrong destination. And so I want you to pray and ask the Lord, give me understanding. Give me understanding. The seventh spirit of God that was upon Jesus, let it come upon me. The ability to know what to do and what given time. The ability to know what to labor for. I don't just want to labor. I don't want to do because everybody is doing. I don't want to labor because everybody is laboring. I don't want to work because everyone is working. I want to do in accordance with the mind of God. I want to do in accordance with the purposes of God. I want to labor in accordance with the will of God. For the Bible says the Spirit searches all things. Yea, even the deep things of Yahweh. The Bible says the Spirit searches all things. The Holy Ghost is better than Google. The Holy Ghost is better than Encyclopedia. The Holy Ghost has the ability to search and find out what you and I must do at what given time and season. And so I want you to pray the Father Lord. Let the grace of the Issachar generation descend upon my life and give me the ability, the insight, the foresight and the oversight and the ability to know what to do and how to do it and where to do it and when to do it and with which people to do it with father give me insight I refuse to labor just because of laboring sake. I refuse to do things for doing sake. But Father, give us wisdom. Give us insight. Father, what must we do? How must we labor? Where must we labor? In what territory must we labor? When must we labor? Give us timelines. Give us the location. Give us the people we must labor with. Must I do it alone or must I do it with people? When must I do it? Oh, Father, help me, help me. Help me, oh Lord. Show me the script. Show me the script. Show me the manual for my season. And the sons of Issachar were men of understanding who understood the times and knew what Israel ought to do. Ought to do. Ought to do. May KAC be men of understanding. May KAC be women of understanding that we would know what to do. Rapalo shetere basuata manto rababani izele badoshata. Father, help us. Holy Ghost, help us. Holy Ghost, help us. Help us to labor according to Your will. Help us to know what to do. Rabalo shata rabante lebeniasa. What must I do? Oh, Holy Ghost. Ah, uh, Jesus said, I must do the will of my Father. My meat is to do the will of my Father. He knew that he hasn't come to do his own will. The laboring was not just because he wanted to come on earth and do it. It was the will of the Father. He was the will of the Father. And so when he encountered situation, when he encountered difficulty, he said, is it possible for, to let this cup pass me by? But nevertheless, your will be done. When you know why, when you know what to do, when you encounter situations, you will be able to say, Father Lord, not my will, but your will. Many people give up because they are doing what they want. Many people give up because they are doing what they please. And so when they encounter situations, they are eager to give up. But we will not give up. I'm not Oh, Father, Lord, oh God, show us, show us, show us, show us, show us what to do. Mantoreba in Tarabadosia, Mantoreba and Lebra Isanaya. Give me timelines, oh God, show me what I must do. The Bible says, God said to Ananias, go to the road called straight. You will find a man called Saul. He hasn't eaten and drunk for three days. He is praying. Ananias knew exactly where to go, which street to find Saul. He knew exactly what Saul was doing and what he needed to do. And so the Bible says, he approached Saul and said, Saul, the Lord 
Lord has sent me to you uh, that your eyes may be open and receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, and so because he knew, uh, he knew what solution to provide. Uh, I am here to ask you a question. Do you know where God has sent you? Do you know to whom he has sent you? Do you know when you must go? Uh, and do you know how you must do it? You are called to sing, but to whom? Uh, which territory? Uh, to which kind of audience? Uh, you are called to business, but what is your audience? To whom have you been called to? Uh, what have you been told to do? Holy uh, Ghost, Holy Ghost, show me, show me what I must do. Masuna mata, rapantiri briyazata, rababa, rapantiri asanda, jenene mesuati, mantore baba sheteya, na masura batia kapaya. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, help us. Holy Ghost, help us. Holy Ghost, help us. Holy Ghost, help us. It is so easy when the Lord tells us exactly what to do. Well, let me put it out. It is easier when the Lord tells us exactly what to do. And when we know, we are not just guessing, guessing and doing things that we want. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I want us to pray and read Psalm 78 verse 9, please. Shall we all read it together? One, two, God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turn back in the day of battle. We all know Ephraim to be the younger son of Joseph. And when the father was blessing the two sons, the father Jacob, in the end of his days, was blessing the sons of Joseph. He knew that Ephraim was the youngest and that Manasseh was the oldest yet he prayed for, he placed his right hand on Ephraim and his left hand and Mo, um, Joseph wanted to switch it and he said no I know what I'm doing and so the sons of Ephraim or Ephraim they were called to be leaders you know and the Bible is making us understand that these were men that had weapons they had they were armed. You know, they, they were carrying bows. But when it came to the day of battle, they turned their backs. When it was time, they had all that it, it, it took. They had the ammunition. They had the weapons. They were called to lead. They were blessed. But in the day of battle, that was when they turned their backs. And many of us have everything that it takes. We have the blood of Jesus. We have Jesus on our boat. We have Jesus inside of the Holy Spirit with us. We essentially have everything. But many a times when the battle day comes or the day of battle comes, we turn our backs. And I want us to pray. The Father, may I not be that individual that will have everything that it takes and still feel incompetent. May I not be that individual that I have all the giftings and still feel incompetent. May I not be that individual that the Lord has prepared me so much in the secret place that even in the day of my rising, I still feel incompetent. May I not be like Saul on the day of his ordination. He still went to hide because he still felt incompetent. I want us to pray the Father Lord because these people had, they were armed. They carried bows. Some of us carry a lot in us. But when it's battle time, we feel like that's the time we have to. Sometimes it's like a spirit forcing you to give up, give up, give up. But I want us to pray. The Father, Lord, help me even as we labor in this season. Because there are going to be days of battle. Even as we labor in this season, give me what it, what it takes to never turn my back. Give me what it takes to never turn my back. Some of us, there are certain battles we need to fight and we have turned our backs on it. They are certain, because if you turn your back, you, you, you will live to fight it another day. So I want us to pray the Father Lord, give me that persistent spirit. 
Help me to not see myself to not be good enough. Because when we see ourselves that way, it's an insult unto God. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I want us to lift up our voice and pray. The Father, Lord, I will not turn my back. I will not turn my back. I will not turn my back. When it's time for me to go forward, I will not turn my back. When it's time for me to move, I will not turn my back. When it's time for me to do what you've called me to do, I will not turn my back. And the children of Ephraim being armed, carrying bows, turn their backs in the day of battle. I want us to pray that this will never be our portion. And I want you to cry out to God, the Father, I will never look back. I will never turn back. I will not turn my back. Lift up your voice and begin to pray this evening. Lift up your voice and begin to pray this evening. You will not turn your back. You will not turn your back in the day of battle. You will not turn your back. Dear intercessor, you will not turn your back in the day of battle. Dear worshiper, you will not turn your back in the day of battle. Dear apostle, you will not turn your back in the day of battle. Dear musician, you will not turn your back in the day of battle. Dear businesswoman, you will not turn your back in the day of battle. You can carry everything you need. You can carry everything that you need and still turn your back. But it will never be a portion of God. We would never give up. 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 We will never give up. Our children will never give up. This generation will never give up. We will not turn our backs in the day of battle. We will not turn our backs in the day of battle. Some of you have been called to be the leader of your family. Some of you have been called to lead your family into battle. You cannot turn your back. Some of you have been called to be the leaders of your community in the realm of the spirit. You cannot turn your back. Oh, Ephraim. Oh, Ephraim, did you know that you've been laid hands upon? Jacob had laid hands upon you. He had blessed you. You had all that it takes. Yet you turned your back. We will not turn our backs. We will not give up. Reba no shata. Reba antele be no siya. Zene ne me ko shata li abadosa. Father, help us to know who we are. Help us to know who we are. We will not have identity crisis. 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 Reba no shata. Reba dosa. Help us to know the weapons we carry. We will not give up. We will not give up. We will not give up. Mashura ba sekete ya. Rabato reba antwani ya sakata. For Paul said, "This one thing I do: forgetting all the past, forgetting about the past, and pressing on towards the goal." For a victorious crown, I'm a robadosha. Zina makota ba. KAC, I've come to tell you that don't turn your back on the day of battle. Don't turn your back in the day of battle. In the day of battle. In the day of battle. Rebadosha. Manto rebadosiata. Zelebadosha. Tarababasiriata. The Holy Spirit just told me this. The Holy Spirit just told me the day you see here is not a physical day, it's a dispensation. So it could be that in a dispensation, they are, there is a generation of people who have everything that it takes. They are prayerful, they, they are zealous, they are vigorous, they have strength, they have everything. But because they feel that they are not good enough in that dispensation, what they do is that they turn their back. And so they miss a move of what God wants to do in that dispensation. And until the next move takes over, 
the cycle continues. So I want us to pray because this was not just Ephraim. This was the children, the descendants of Ephraim. So they were in a different dispensation. And I want us to pray that Father Lord, in this dispensation of grace, in this dispensation, we will not have grace and still turn our backs in the day of battle. We will not have greater grace. Lift up your voice and begin to pray that we will not have greater grace and still turn our backs in the day of battle. We will not have greater grace and still turn our backs in the day of battle. This is the dispensation of grace. Makura batusa, pantus karabadosha, redele badusa baya, isina makwantira brasida la baya, isine nene meko shatariata. We will be a generation that will not give up. We will be a generation that will fight. We will be a generation that will break generational curses. We will be a generation that will set a new order. We will be a generation that will set a new pace. We will be a generation that will be trailblazers. We will be a generation that will not stop the move of God. We will not give up. Masule Braanta, Ishele Bede Repani Sanwati, Ampalo Shanta Rakatiya Kapaya, Ejire Baan Shalabaya. In my family, I will not give up. In my family, I will not give up. In my business, I will not give up. In my community, I will not give up. In the territory assigned to me, I will not give up. I will not give up with soul winning. I will not give up with prayer. I will not give up with fighting. I will not give up with winning. I will not give up. I will not give up. Rebele shele brase ke tele badosa. Ampan tuwa karabado shata. Andele bre ine me kosa paya. Suwa grante rebedo shaya. Nothing will stop us. Nothing will cause us to give up. Nothing will stop us. Nothing will stop us. We have the arms. We have the bows. We have the weapons. Rebele shata rabadosa. Antende le bre ina makusha tuwa. Zelebe ita rababaya. Nemi santa rabadosha pa. Relebebe isa tuwa. Antelebe isha palabaya. Repepe ika paliza ta. Zumpa la katiri bria sakata le bre telebe de bebo saka palia sapa. Rendo le bre kina makosha tuwa pa. Zelebe in palabaya. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. The Bible says put on the full armor of God. We have the armor of God. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the gospel of the of peace, which is our shoe on our shoes. We have everything that it takes. We have every weapon. We have everything. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We cannot give up. We cannot give up. We cannot give up. We cannot give up. The United Kingdom will be saved, and we will not give up. Our families will be saved, and we will not give up. Rebele bashotere basataya. We will not turn our backs. We will not turn our back. 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 Rebele bashete yabaya. There is something ahead of us, and we will not turn our backs. There is something ahead of us, and we will not turn our backs. There is something ahead of us, and we will not turn our backs. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I want us to just thank God as we enter into a time of worship. I want us to lift up our voices and prepare our hearts as we enter into a time of worship. That Jesus will fill this place, that the atmosphere will be filled with worship, that there will be myriads, upon a, myriads of angels in this place worshiping with us as we lift up our holy hands in one accord. This is your evening sacrifice. David said, let the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. This is our evening sacrifice. This is our evening sacrifice. It was at the evening sacrifice that Elijah restored the altars and called down fire. It was at the time of the evening sacrifice that the angel came to Daniel and gave him understanding. It was at the evening sacrifice that the Bible says Jesus gave up his ghost. He gave up his spirit and said it is finished. This is the evening sacrifice. This is the time of the evening sacrifice. 
is the time of the evening sacrifice and so prepare your hearts prepare your hearts that our worship will be accepted by our father that our worship will be accepted by our father that our worship will be accepted by our father that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be accepted and will be pleasant and will be like a sweet swelling aroma in its nostrils and the Lord will take pleasure and delight in our worship oh lift up your voice come on don't stop don't stop let's worship him in spirit and in truth Le coli ama soy, le cana ma soy, le cana ma soy, ana ma soy, re coli ama ma 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 soy, re coli ama soy, we worship you God.
And as your hands are lifted, offer him the fruit of your lips. Offer him the fruit of your lips. Set your heart on the Lord right now. Just set your heart on Him. Don't allow your spirit man to be wandering. Just set your heart on Him in the place of stillness. He leads me beside still waters. Set your heart. Father, we honor you with our hearts, our minds, our innermost being. We worship you. Be glorified in our lives. Be glorified in our hearts. Be glorified in our covering. Be thou glorified. For from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the 
name of the Lord is to be praised. We honor you, Father. We honor your Holy Spirit. We honor you, Jesus. Take delight, take pleasure in our worship. Take delight in our coverings. For for you and to you we were made. Be glorified again, Father. Be glorified again, Holy Spirit. Be glorified again, Jesus. Reign in our hearts. Reign in our lives. And reign as kin in our midst. We honor you. We glorify you. And we praise you today, now, and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus and the sin shall say amen. Clap your hands and praise him. If you are praising, praise him well. Be seated in the presence of God. Be seated in God's presence. pray for unto you O Lord shall the gathering of the people be therefore unto you Father today we gather we ask you precious Lord that you have your way in our midst let your word come to instruct us by them are your servant warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. Teach us the counsel of the Father. Bring us into the will of the Father. Bring us into the mind of the Father. Bring us into the world of the Father. Precious Holy Spirit, you are our teacher, and we are your students have your way. We take every heart captive. We take every mind captive. We take this vicinity, the community, the heavens above and the earth beneath captive. We forbid every agenda of the enemy from having effect. And we declare that let the counsel of Elohim alone Stand in a covering today. We ask for strength and we ask for grace, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. How's everybody doing? Good, 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 good. Let's go straight to the point. Let's bless God for the life of Elizabeth and Deborah. For setting the so well. We want to continue from what we are studying and where we left off last week, Wednesday, on the subject of pursuit, the power of pursuit. Last week we established that pursuing is the act of following or 
or searching for someone or something in order to either catch something or to attack the person or the thing. We establish that there are some things you attain because you wait. But there are certain things you also obtain because you chase. We establish that the only gentleness this kingdom demands is the fruit of the spirit called gentleness. But when it comes to laying hold of eternal realities, the Bible says since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence shall take it by force. We looked at Philippians, the chapter number three. And we had Paul say to the church of Philippi, verse number 12, we hear Paul say to the church of Philippi that not that I've already attained or am I already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So we establish that for each and every one of us, there's a reason why Christ has laid over hold of us. It means that beyond reconciliation to the Father, beyond God giving us a place in heaven, every one of us, Christ is reaching out for us for something. But however, you don't stay home. You don't sit down and expect Christ to just stretch forth his hands to you and say, take it. Paul says that he presses on so that he can lay hold of this thing that Christ has laid hold of him. So we came to the conclusion that in this kingdom you can be gentle and it is allowed and be. But when it comes to attaining certain graces and obtaining certain, you know, um, 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 mantles and things like that, you need to be a man and a woman who is always attacking, pursuing, chasing. And that is the attitude we need to develop. Then we used Elisha as a prototype. In 1 Kings 19, the verse number 15, over there we see that the Lord says to Elijah that go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, he said, anoint. Azael a skin over Syria. Jehu, the son of Nimshi, over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola. You shall anoint as prophet in your place. Then the Bible talks about the fact that if Je um, Jezebel or any of, his, of her allies or cohorts escapes the sword of Hazael, they will not escape the sword of Jehu. If they escape the sword of Jehu, they will not escape the sword of Elisha. But continuously, go to the verse number, go to the next verse. The Bible says that Elijah departs from the place where God is speaking to him. And he finds Elisha, the son of Shaphat, the very man the Lord is saying, I've anointed him in your place. So it means that according to God's eternal counsel, Elisha is the automatic replacement of Elijah. Are we here? The Bible says that Elisha finds Elisha. And the natural thing to do is that to say, young man, God said the mantle is yours, so take it. So the Bible says that he finds Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing the 12 yoke of oxen before him. We establish that God does not anoint lazy people. That as Elijah finds Elisha, Elisha is not playing FIFA 24. Or is not watching... Love Island. Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is not watching the latest movie on Netflix. He finds Elisha, the son of Shaphat, on the field plowing 12 yoke of oxen, which represents government. And that Elisha had completed the 11th, and he was on the verge of completing the 12th. So Elisha was actually on the verge of even getting the job done. 
Some of you are looking for promotion, but you have not even started what has been given to you already. Elisha is almost up. Technically, by the time he's done with the 12, there's nothing else to do. So isn't it not interesting that Elijah finds him on the verge of when he's about to complete a certain phase of plowing. And the Bible says that as he meets him, Elijah passed by him and threw the mantle on him. So, contrary to believe that Elijah was chasing before the mantle got to him, we recognize that he actually gets the mantle before Elijah begins the journey from Gilgal. So the Bible says that Elijah passed by him and threw not the mantle, his mantle on him. But the Bible says that the moment the mantle comes upon Elisha, he leaves the oxen and ran. Would you still run after what you are looking for when it is given to you? Would you still run after God if he makes you the man he wants you to become? Would you still run after God when he makes you the woman he wants you to become? Would you still have motivation to chase God? Would you still have, would you still be like a child? Would you still be hungry? If, if, if God gives you everything you are looking for in this journey, if he lets you hold that crusade, if he lets that business blow, if God gives you everything, you, you must be crazy that Elijah gi gives you the mantle. You know, you will not understand, but the mantle in, in these days signified the authority of the man. The mantle was not a prayer show. It wasn't something that was around their neck. It was something they wore under their garment. So for somebody to remove what is you know, the talit. For somebody to remove what is under his garment and give it to you, the man is almost spiritually rendering himself naked. He's rendering himself powerless. I mean, I mean, if I was Elisha, the son of Shaphat, right from here, I'm going to hold a crusade. And that's the truth because that which... You know, and, and contrary to this, in these days, Elizabeth, God didn't have five prophets. God was not anointing ten prophets parade. Is it not interesting that he actually tells him to anoint two kings, but only one prophet? Because Israel cannot be in confusion. Whether there are two voices speaking to the nation, I am a prophet, you are a prophet, who should we listen to? So the most esteemed position that any man could be in those days was not the place of a king. No matter how much a king was prestiged in Israel and in Judah and all of these type of places, prophets were king makers. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So Elisha technically realized the dream. But it tells you the mindset of this young man. No wonder he was not a king, but he was plowing. No wonder this guy was in the field getting himself dirty. That you get the mantle and the Bible says that. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. He's trying to say that I'm not just interested in what you carry. I'm interested in you as a man. If, if God gives you what you want, would you chase him not for what you are looking for but who he is? Do you know that there are a lot of us, we, we love the gifts. And not necessarily God. You know, there are many of us, we love what comes with their gifts. But not necessarily, we are not pursuing God for, the, for, 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 you know, for his heart. We want to go to the nation so that people know we've arrived. And, and trust me, there's a, there's a thin line, be, you know, there's, there's not a thin line. There's a massive difference between loving what God calls you to do and loving him. Especially in a generation where doing the work of God is massive. Let us be honest. This is not the generation where you are despised for being a preacher. In our generation, you are actually worshipped for being a preacher. In, 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 in the days of our grandparents, if a lady brought a pastor home to say, I'm going to marry him, you've committed abomination. You are going to marry a pastor. What do you mean? 
they were considered the lowest of the lows. In our days, Apostle General, why are you looking at Apostle? Why? <laughs> prophet 1, Prophet 5, Prophet 2. It's, it's very, very easy to love this job. I, 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 can, I, can, I can tell you that, you know, I've been in seasons where I've preached every day and I've not prayed. I've been in seasons where I've preached and I've not read my Bible. I've been in seasons where I've looked into my Bible for what I can preach out of it to people and not necessarily to me. I'm trying to tell you that the, the work of ministry can be so enticing that you would think that just because you are doing this work, you love God. Am I speaking to people here? I used to watch a certain advert back then on God TV many, many years ago. And in this advert on God TV, it's like Jesus is coming to look for a certain young lady. Let's assume she's called Anna. And in this God TV ad, he'd say, Anna, I came to your bed around 6 o'clock in the morning, but you were asleep. He said, I came back around 9, but you were rushing on your way to school. He said, I left it because you were busy. I came back around 12, but you had lunch. He said, I came back around 4 o'clock, but you were chasing a bus back home. He said, I came back around 6 because you were doing your homework. He said, I came back around 8. You were at the dining table watching TV with the family. He said, I came back around 10. You are asleep. By the way, I'm still here. If, if, if you have time, I'm here. And guys, in the moments of us saying we are laboring, it is not an excuse not to have time for God. It is not an excuse not to make time for God. Some of us, God is not giving us what we are looking for because he knows the moment we get it, we won't chase after him. Elisha, the son of Shaphat, after obtaining the mantle, the Bible says that he ran after Elijah. He's, uh, he's almost saying that, sir, thank you for what you carry, but I also want to chase you as a man. And you see, just like in Matthew, the chapter number 19, I think the verse number 27, Peter would ask Jesus, we've left everything to follow you. What would you give us? What I want you to understand is that Elisha, the son of Shaphat, did not lose the mantle because he chased Elijah. As a matter of fact, though he carried... I'm thinking, how many mantles did Elijah have? Which one was Elijah going up with? Which one did Elisha tear into do? When Elisha was chasing Elijah, did Elijah, did Elijah take his mantle again from Elisha and put it on again? Is it not a mystery? Because at the end, in 2 Kings the chapter number 2, at the end of the life of Elijah, Elisha gets a double portion. But in 1 Kings, Elijah already gave it to him. Did he take it to where it again? These are things we would need to ask. But one of the things that I know is that scripture was fulfilled. That the end of a thing is always better than the beginning. Do you understand what I'm going to say? What I'm going to say is that if you think that working with God is good now, check how you become in 30 years time. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling <laughs> The end of the matter is always better than the beginning. The mantle at the end of the life of Elijah was much more authoritative and superior than when he casted it upon him in the first time. Because I told you that mantles go through what we call maturation. Anybody taking the mantle of Benihin now compared to when Benihin began is not the same weight. Because the moment Elijah will go from Gilgal to Bethel, the mantle has matured. The moment he goes from Gilgal to Jericho, the, from Bethel to Jericho, the mantle has matured. The moment he goes from the jo you know, from Jericho to the Jordan, the mantle has matured. Anytime a man walks with God in obedience, what God places over his life increases. 
Because for God, he does not necessarily deal with time. God deals with obedience in moments and in seasons. Am I speaking to somebody here? Any time God puts you in an, a position to obey him, he's giving you an opportunity to be stronger. He's giving you an opportunity to graduate from one step to the other. That is why in the book of Luke, the chapter number 2, the verse number 52, he says that, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? In Luke 1, you know, the verse number 81, the Bible talks about, you know, how John the Baptist became strong in spirit. So it means that in this spirit world, we can appreciate. And you don't appreciate because you pray more. It's a place for that. But you appreciate because you obey in moments and in seasons. That's why God will say, he that is faithful with the little more would be given. So anytime my time of faithfulness is tested with God, anytime I pass every test he has set ahead of me, I am much more stronger, heavier, and I am much more, you know, dangerous in the spirit than the moment you met me before. This is why we can never in our walk with God become familiar with people, especially if they are men and women that are obedient in their walk with God. Am I speaking to somebody? Am I speaking to somebody? So, we recognize that Elisha pursues Elijah. As a matter of fact, we are going to go there in 2 Kings the chapter number 2. You recognize that Elijah did everything to deter Elisha. Was Elijah a wicked man? No. He wasn't. Because if you read here, you recognize he says that, you know, then I will follow you. And Elijah said to him, go back again. For what have I done to you? And we read that in the Amplified Version. Put it there. And this is what Elijah said to Elijah in the Amplified Version where he says, go back again. He says that, go on back. For what have I done to stop you? Then I will follow you. Other versions would tell you that Elijah would tell Elijah, think of what I've done to you. In other words, you have to recognize the weight of the sacrifice or the mountain I've placed upon you. And if you recognize it, if you recognize the weight, you will the weight, you will not treat it as something which is trivial because you did not come looking for it. You know there are many of the things you don't look for, you don't respect. Come and be like, yeah, yeah, okay, it's Wednesday. We are going to kingdom school. Uh, this thing I teach you every Wednesday, people want to pay for it. I'm, t I'm telling you the truth. I'm just not, I'm just not a guy who, who treats this gospel. I'm very, very circumspect in the way I deal with certain type of things. But let me put this thing down when I say, oh, school of ministry, whatever, you know, enrollment, 600 pounds every month. And see, you see, in our generation, we'll purchase everything. You just need to market it. People would, people would take it much more seriously because they paid for it. Take that same course and, and, and preach it in church. People will sleep. You see, you don't sleep when you're paying 600 pounds for a month. Yes or no? Oh, talk to me, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. You sleep because you didn't pay. The government is paying student loan. You are not paying. You paid. When you start work and you are paying the money back, you will not sleep. I promise you. Tell the Lord, say Lord, Lord. let me place value on that which you give me daily. May the Lord not sell his word to us. Do you know that the prophet said, he said, we are going to come in the days of scarcity. He said, it will not be scarcity of bread or be scarcity of the word. People would wander from town to town. They would, have, they would have in their hand money to buy, but they wouldn't get. What we are rejecting for free, we will chase with money, but it will be too late. Tatiana, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, Elisha 
Elijah makes sure that Elijah, Elijah makes sure that Elisha values this thing. So, the more you study, you recognize that Elijah did not dislike Elisha. He just wanted to be sure that this guy wants this thing that bad. So even though Elijah is giving him tough time, you see, some of you, the moment you feel opposition, you feel, you feel the test. Oh, my manager doesn't like me. No, 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 no. Maybe the manager is just checking how much resilience you have. Oh, I, I, want, to, I want to change the department. My leader doesn't like me. No, no. We will not always act like we like him. Even God had to act like he didn't like Jesus. He had to act. My father, my father. Why hast thou forsaken me? When Jesus Christ said, if it is possible, let this cup, you know, depart. He expected the Lord to say, son, I love you. I will let it depart. Because when he goes and prays, say, father, show me your glory. The Lord will show it. But there are certain times that God would cause men to act like they don't like you. And it's not a problem with those men. God would have to test your resilience. There are many people, the moment things are anti what you expected, you, you push back. The moment things are not the way you want it to be, you run away and you say, the Lord said to me. The Lord hasn't said. You are, not, you are just not built for things that does not appease to your feeling. We will not always like you. And we don't have to like you. The objective is that we get the job done. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because out there is tough. I'm, look, I'm telling you, it is tough out there. People are not surviving there because they are like. Jesus said, he said, in this world they would hurt you. He said, tomorrow has its own troubles. He said, but take it, I've overcome. Revelation the chapter number 12. And they did not love their lives. For some reason, we expect that if we go for evangelism, everybody should smile. Everybody should accept. Do you want to accept Jesus? Yes. We, we, we want to see people smiling at us, forgetting that this thing is a battle zone. We can, we can, you see, in a boxing match, even when we are just exchanging pleasantries, we don't laugh. I've never seen any box, boxer seeking for smiles in the ring. The moment you begin to recognize that you don't do things because, you know, people love you or they appreciate you or you smile, but you do things that because it must get done, you would be steadfast. And as Paul would say to the church in Corinth, you'll be immovable. It means, listen, I'm telling you this gospel, whether you smile or not, you will hear it. Oh, talk to me. <laughs> I left my house to preach to you. Whether you swear at me or not, you will hear the gospel. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm coming to the city to take it. Whether you receive me or not, I'm here to take the seat. Do you understand? There is a certain level of stubbornness that our generation is void of. So, the moment things don't go our way, Elisha would have missed what God had ordained for him, had he not, you know, had he not developed a certain type of stubbornness, where, the, can you imagine the man who is trying, you are trying to follow, tells you don't follow me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Imagine I tell somebody in this church, Pastor, you know, I want to follow you. Don't follow me. Pastor, I want to go with you. You can't go with me. You don't qualify. <laughs> Pastor, um, um, no. You're, it's, you're not the type of person I'm looking for. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That proud pastor. 
you know, do you know the amount of times after this guy, how, how many times have you come to me like, I want to come for that meeting and say, you will not come. This guy will kneel down, pastor, I'll say no. But this guy has, he's, he's a stubborn guy. Like, 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 guys, guys, like, like, like somebody would be emotionally mad. That I said no. But do you know that just because I said no does not mean I don't like it. Sometimes we are saying no to see if you are man enough. If you are woman enough. If you are resilient enough. Because you see, life is not going to give this thing to you because you think you deserve it. Am I, am, I, am I speaking to people here? Nobody offered us anything for free. Nobody. And that's the truth. And we will not give it to you for free. Elijah said to Elisha, he said, think of what I've done to you. And when Elijah is moving and Elisha wants to pursue him, this man is consistently and it brings me to this. It brings my mind to the story of the persistent widow. The Bible says she worried the judge by her continual coming. You prayed for something twice. God didn't do it. You said maybe it is not for me. Maybe, maybe God, you know. And 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 one of the signs. That you don't have resilience and steadfastness. You're like, uh, uh, you know, maybe it is not for me. Or sometimes you say, um, what, what is my will come to me? Or sometimes you say like, oh, 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 you know, Father, I let, just let your will be done. <laughs> it's, 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 if, if I don't get it, then it is, it, may, it is the will of the It is not the will of the Father. You, you don't have what it takes. Huh, some people have, but hey, oh, this girl, where is Jack? This girl, she can bother me. I'll say, okay, okay, no, it's okay, come. There are certain people you don't have a choice. I, I personally, I like people that are troublous. I like people that are resilient. You know, I have only 24 hours in a day. I would only give to people who value this by their continual coming. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So Elisha was not willing to take no for an answer. May that be you. Oh. Oh. Even the Bible says you who call upon the name of the Lord, he said, do not give him rest. It means that if God rested in Genesis, I have the ability to deny him rest. He said, those who call upon the Lord, he said, do not give him rest. And the story of the persistent widow, he said, will the Lord not avenge speedily those who call upon him day and night? It's not good enough to call him on day. It's not good enough to call upon him in the night. There's a condition, he said, those who call upon him day and night. You say, God has the, even if God says no, he's God by himself. He has the ability to turn the no into yes. Ask Hezekiah, he would turn. Ask Hezekiah, he would turn. Hezekiah said, no, no, no. There was, and he turned his face to the wall. You see, if we want to walk in a certain greater measure of this oil, eh? if we want to walk in the certain great... Look, look, look. I don't know how I survived 24 hours. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I am just that guy. I'm too mentally strong. Well, I'm not boasting. I'm not boasting. If I have a weakness, I'll tell you, guys, you know, I would t my mental fortitude is crazy. Hey, look, when I get up in the morning and I set my mind for this, take you to hell, I'll come there. No 
Nobody gave us anything for free. Oh. Thank God for those who had things. But nobody. Nobody. This is why most of the time God likes using people from the world. Oh, I'm telling you. This is why when God grabs one drug dealer, one lady on the street, God uses them for crazy things because the guys who are born in church, the women who are born in church and they have lived all their life in church, they lack a certain level of resilience. I don't know, it's like, it's like coming to church almost makes us weaklings. Then the Lord will, the Lord will say in, in, in Acts the chapter number 13 concerning Paul, he said the same way he was used by the enemy against the church. The Lord said, in that same way, I will use him. God is even attesting to source negativity for his use. Because he knew that this guy can set up his mind to go and grab a letter from Jerusalem. To pursue it all the way to Damascus and back. Just to make sure that people who are calling upon the name of the Lord. The guy knew that this guy is the type of guy, if they stone him, he would get up and continue. You, let the ushers tell you there's no seat for you. You see, I may be young, but I've seen different generations. The man who raised me in the Baptist church, some 20 years back, some 21 years back, some 17, 18 years back, was an old man. I've seen how we were raised. And I see how people are being raised now. And I can tell you the truth. It's not the same. All of our generation is just good marketing, good media, polished Christianity. Yes, we are gifted. We are extremely gifted. We are gifted when it comes to the word. We are gifted, but everything else is publicity. But when it comes to people that are built to last, I doubt that if God takes 100 people in our generation, whether he will get 10. I doubt. Because we are a spoiled generation that believes that whatever we want, we should get. May God help us. I said, may God help us. Sit down. So, Elisha, in as much as the mantle is given to him, decides to run after Elijah. Then we go to 2 Kings, the chapter number 2. Quickly, today I want to talk about the Joash generation. The Bible says in 2 Kings 2 that it came to pass. It will come to pass. When the Lord was about to take up Elijah, I, I, I want us to draw some contrast and some similarities here. Second Kings, the chapter number two, the Bible says this, that and it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elisha into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Come with me to 2 Kings 13. We'll come back to 2 Kings. I just want you, because the one with whom Elisha passes on this baton is to a man called Joash. He had a servant by the name of Eliezer, but we recognize that he wanted money much more than the mantle. You understand what I'm trying to say? Those of you that when you are working with people, you are more concerned about what you would profit. Be very careful you don't become, you don't become leprous. Me, I've told you, I didn't come with a church. I will not die with a church. God sent me, I've done my job. By the grace of God, 
you're an extension, you're just doing it. At any point in time, if you feel like this thing is yours, take it. I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm very serious. If any time, Petra, you think that it did, take it. Because naked we came. Naked we shall go. You see, we don't do this work with a covetous mindset or mentality. This is what made the servant of Elisha miss the mantle. What the master rejected, the guy went and said, ah, the, my master said, and he took it. And the Bible said that the leprosy that was upon Naaman, it came upon him. Now, another man by Josh has the opportunity to take the mantle from Elisha. Come to the verse number 14. And the Bible says that Elisha had become sick. And with the illness which he will die, then Josh the king of Israel came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. In my place of studying, I wanted to find out what Joash means. Is there anybody here called Joash? Nobody? I wanted to find. And Joash simply means given by the Lord. So, in drawing comparison, Elizabeth, Elisha's position was given to him by the Lord. Because the Lord said to Elijah, anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, from Abel Mehola in your place. So, Elisha did not ask for this man to God chose him. This man called Joash, by virtue of him leaving his name, it means that he is, this thing is given to him by God. But then you'd recognize that though these two people were all given this thing by God, their attitude was different. Just because it is given to you does not mean you exercise it sitting. As a matter of fact, he that much is given to. Talk to me. Much is what? Required. Just because it is given to you by God does not mean that oh, God has given to me, he will work it. Things don't work itself. Things don't work itself. Today I was I was speaking to somebody in the office. Who who was I speaking to? I was talking to too many people today. Oof. I don't remember the people I've had a meeting with. I've gone so blank. But I was speaking to somebody in the office today. And I was telling the person Genesis 126. And God said, Let us make man. So he created them, Genesis 126. Then he comes to Genesis 2 and says that this is how God formed the man. So you recognize that <laughs> there's the created man and there's the formed man. He calleth the things that be not. That is creation. God has the power by himself to say, let human being appear. And human being would appear. But in the place of God exercising his authority by his spoken word, there is still a place God said, you know what? I need to take clay, mold a man from his feet to his knee, to his waist, to his shoulder, all the way up. And God had to continue to exercise the work of breathing. So he recognized that in as much as man is God's creation, God had a lot of work. That is why in the book of Genesis, the chapter number 5, the Bible will say God regretted that he had created man. Do you know why he regretted? Because he did not just speak. There is no way the Bible says God, you know, regretted for forming a goat or a sheep. Because all of these things are things he just called for. But when it came to man, God did not just speak man into existence. God actually went into the business of creating and curating man. So, 
The prophetic word says that God has called you to become an apostle. Glory be to God. God has called you to take nations. Glory be to God. The prophetic word says that God has called you to, to, to you know, um, 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 take over the world. Glory be to God. The prophetic word sounds good, but it must be formed. <laughs> you must work that prophecy. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? The prophetic word says that you shall become, but you don't become because it was spoken of you. You become because you get into the business of getting dirty and picking up clay. So you can imagine if you saw God, then you'll be a dirty man. Because nobody plays with clay and is clean. May God help us to get ourselves dirty. When it comes to destiny, there's nothing called classy lady. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm a classy lady, you know. Uh, no. When it comes to fulfillment of prophecy, there's nothing called a classy gentleman. This work is reserved for men and women that are willing to get themselves dirty. So the Bible says that in 2 Kings 2, the Bible says that Elisha was about to be taken, Elijah was about to be taken by God. In other words, the statement announces his departure. And over here in 2 Kings 13, he says that, and Elisha had fallen sick, and with the illness for which he was to die, Joash, the king of Israel, went down to him and wept before him, crying, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. Hey, you don't take a mantle because you're emotional. You know that in 2 Kings, this is the same way Elisha was calling Elijah. Oh, let's read it. 2 Kings 2. 2 Kings 2. 1. Quickly. And it came to pass that the Lord was about to take Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. That Elijah went, from, went with Elisha from Gilgal. Continue. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto a Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord leaves... And as your soul leaves, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Continue. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord would take your master away from you over today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. May God give us that attitude. Amen. A lot of church people will be offended by this. Four. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Jericho. But he said, you see, every city Elijah went in, there was something there to be taken. Every journey Elijah undertook, there was something in there for Elijah. Why would the Lord tell this man to journey through these nations or cities? Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, in other words, I bound myself by an oath. If a man tells you as the Lord lives, will God ever die? It means change your mind. It won't happen. Now that I've decided I'm with you, I'm with you. Unless God dies. That is when you bind yourself with an oath with something you know can never happen. He says that, please, the Lord has sent me unto Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they, con they came to Jericho. Continue. Now the sons of the, I, I dislike these sons of the prophets. Just because somebody is a prophet doesn't mean they speak for God. Oh, talk to me. Even Jezebel calls herself a prophetess. He said, you entertain that woman or that prophetess who calls herself. You entertain Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. The sons, the sons of the prophets were actually discouraging Elisha from pursuing his destiny. Hey, don't accept every prophecy. Talk, come on, talk to me. Just because you are accurate, that's not mean you are accurate this time. It also tells me 
that just because you know the will of God does not mean that you have the capacity to obtain that will. The sons of the prophet knew the truth that Elijah was departing, but they did not have the discipline embedded in themselves to chase. If Elijah's mantle could part into two and become a double portion, it means that if all of these men had decided to follow him, there would have been a demarcation of the mantle for each and every one of them. Can I tell you something? Don't just possess head knowledge. Have resilience. I don't know who I'm talking to. I see because I'm not shouting today. I'm conserving energy. The whole of next week, I'm in Indonesia for two weeks. I'm not going to kill myself here. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Just because you see, does not mean you can go. When I was young, the Lord told me of the signboard syndrome. The Lord said to me, he said, son, when you are driving, you see the signboard that will tell you 14 miles to London, 12 miles to, to Woolwich, 10 miles to Northampton. He said, when you get to the destination, you don't see the signboard there. He said, signboard points people to destinations. They don't go themselves. Time boss are accurate in prophecy. 12 miles you'll be in London. Follow it. I guarantee you in 12 miles you'll be in London. But by the time you get there, the signboard wouldn't be there. The signs of the prophet were accurate because it's true. God is about to take Elijah. But if you are a prophet, you know that Elijah is the master prophet. <laughs> there can be only one Elijah. And if God has given me the ability to see, there are some of you, there are things happening that God showed you. God came to speak to you and told you, there's going to be war. A new prime minister is about to come. God told you, in the next two weeks, these things will happen. And all that happened to you is that it happened and you tell yourself, I was very accurate. The sons of the prophet were accurate without sense. Why would God show me something if, if he doesn't want to give me grace for it? Elisha was not seen. <laughs> he was not one of the sons of the prophet. In, as a matter of fact, until Elijah died, Elisha is not the prophet. Because if you understand the subject of will, the will only comes to effect after the one who did the will departs. So Elijah, you cannot walk in the mantle of Elijah whilst Elijah is still alive. So Elijah would only become prophet Elijah after the death of Elijah. So technically, Elijah is a guy who doesn't see but he's stubborn in, he doesn't see in the spirit. But he's stubborn enough to say, I know this guy. He's a prophet. He's going to die. What he carries, I like it. So whatever is on the way, I will journey with him regardless. Am I speaking to people? Am I speaking to people? There are people that are less gifted, but more stubborn. Oh, your casa valley me kata. There are people that are less gifted. There are people building the world. There are people taking nations. They've never seen an angel. They've never entered the third heavens. There are people that are routing in the power of God. They have never heard the Lord call out their name in the night. But the moment they set their mind on something to say, Lord, I want to change the world. Lord, I want to walk in your power. Lord, I want to walk in your grace. They would go the ends of the earth and travel the journey to become. And you have people that are privileged to be sons of prophet. Prophetic accuracy by the assigned boards. Casey, may we not just be a gifted church. May you not just be gifted. May you not 
just be gifted. And Elisha will say to them, I know, keep silent. Why did these guys not follow? Because you see, when you are a son of the prophet, you are spoiled. You are spoiled. I've seen Christians sleeping on their Bible. And one Muslim is converted. And he will not let you rest. Teach me Genesis. Teach me. Pastor, why this? Pastor, why that? Pastor, why this? Pastor, why that? Sometimes those who are born into it don't value it. They were the sons of the prophet. They wanted to prove to Elisha we can prophesy. And they were accurate. Do you know that the Lord is about to take away your master from, off, from you over today? So he answered, yes, I know. Shut up. If all you want the world to know is that you are accurate prophetically. A prophet died and left debt for his children. What was the use of his accuracy? Some of you, your, your whole objective in life is to be accurate. You, you just want to hit the meat and call somebody and say, Ah, I see O B A F E M I. Who is O B A F E M I? <laughs> have you been to those meetings that the prophet calls you and say your name is above him he say oh yes and then he screams and say you are a prophet and he doesn't say anything why are you calling my name oh Bex you love in such a meeting that guy just calls you and mentions your name everybody ah! and he doesn't say anything because to him it's a subject of proving that is prophetically accurate. God called my name for what? I know my name. What's the message? What's the message? What's the mandate? What's the mission? What are the requirements? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Sit down. So he says that. They, so they, they are they are the sons of the they are sports. So he said, yeah, I know. Shut up. Elisha is so determined, he doesn't want anybody to talk him out of this journey. He's like, keep quiet. I don't even want you to say something that would discourage me. I know you say I'm a fool, I know. Don't talk. Because the, the, the mission, in, the message in town will be like, he has left his business to follow a man who is going to die. Some men who are going to die have much more to offer than some men who are living. Let's continue. Six. Then the Lord said, stay here, please. For the Lord has sent me unto Jordan, but he said, the Lord lives as your soul lives. I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Continue. And 50 men of the sons of the prophet, 50. went on and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. The sons of the prophets were much more interested in delivering an, an accurate prophecy to Elisha than pursuing Elijah. And they stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Continue. Now Elijah took his mantle. In other words, now You've qualified. Rolled it up and struck the water. And it was divided. And, and, and it was divided this way and that. So that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Nine. So it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask. <laughs> you see, there's a certain question you expect us to ask you. We are not asking because you don't qualify. You want your boss to ask you, do you want to be promoted? He's not asking. He won't ask. Because there's certain questions you only ask when you have crossed to the other side of the Jordan. Elijah must ask Elisha. Because at the other side of the Jordan, the river has closed to you. If he does not ask and God takes him and he's gone, you will stay there and die. In Gilgal, you can return. In Bethel, you can return. 
In Jericho, you can be dead. But at the other side of the Jordan, he opened the sea for you to get there. If he does not ask you what he wants and he leaves, what? you are left. So even if Elijah does not like you, he must ask. Because the key to returning back is in the question. What is it that I may do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Now, let's answer the secret in 1 Kings 19. Elijah gives the mantle to Elisha. He saw him plowing. He cast the mantle upon him. You can receive a garment. <laughs> hey, ushers, ushers. Ushers. Don't let this guy sit here anymore. Ushers. Don't let Elisha sit here anymore. <laughs> Let's continue. Let's continue. But in 1 Kings 19, Elijah received the mantle, the garment. But over here, we recognize that Elijah does not ask for a mantle. He said, let a double portion of your spirit. So, Elijah got the mantle, but he was looking for the spirit. Oh my God. He was looking for the spirit of Elijah. Elijah was looking for what John the Baptist became. He didn't say, and John the Baptist would return in the mantle of Elijah. He said, and John the Baptist would return in the spirit of Elijah. You can inherit the mantle without the spirit. You can inherit the microphone without the spirit. You can inherit the office without the spirit. You can inherit the church without the spirit. You can inherit the business without the spirit. So Elijah was not after the mantle because it was given to him. He said, let the spirit. Elisha understood that the spirit of men the Bible calls them the spirit of just men. Elisha understood that the spirit of men can be transferred by impartation. Jesus gave of us not his garment. Ayakatalabahasa we did not inherit the garment of Jesus. The soldiers were looking for his garment. The disciples were looking for his spirit. Talk to me somebody. When Jesus Christ resurrected, his garment was folded in the tomb. But when he met the disciples, he breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Elisha was not happy with just the mantle. He pursued him for the spirit. He said, let a double portion of your spirit be upon you. Now watch this. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. It's true. It's true, it's hard. If you had asked just for the mantle, I will give. It's just a cloth. But you are asking me of a double portion of my spirit. It means that you are asking me to die. Because if I take my spirit man and I put it upon you, it would be the end of my life. That is why Elijah would not ask Elisha. He said, if he said, he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken, because you see, when a man is dying, his spirit man leaves him. 
Oh, talk to me, somebody. His spirit man leaves him. A man without his spirit is a dead man. So Elijah said, as long as I am living, if I give it to you, it's an indication. I need to fall before you flood. He said, what you have asked, if you had asked for just a mantle, it is easy. If you had asked for justice, it is easy. He said that, he said, when you see me, when I am taken from you, it shall be so. But if not, it will not be so. In other words, you cannot inherit my spirit until I'm taken away from you. It, this is the same thing Jesus said, it is good to, for you that I go. He had to die. It is good for you that I go. If I do not go. So the Bible says that when he died, he died as the only begotten son. But he resurrected as the firstborn of those who are risen from the grave. In other words, when he died, he could multiply himself. As long as he lived, he was limited. Jesus didn't fly from Capernaum to Jericho. He needs to walk. He needs to do all of these kind of things. But when he died, there were many Jesuses. So in Antioch, they met them and they said, these are christ -teans. Huh? May the spirit of the just men be upon you. Yes. Oh my God, my God, my God. My God, my God. Where are the Elijahs? Where are the Elijahs of our days? Hayatakosa. Vini me kapratoya. Elakataya masu. Vente kaluski pata. Ili biva lukataya. Ilaba kosele me kapata. Masone me kata. Hayata. Lord, is Mekosa, Lord, your spirit, the fullness of your spirit, the fullness of your spirit, not just your mantle, not just your gift, Lord. Your spirit, my shadow kosa, venta kalua sa, iraba vonto kosa, latula brasa, in talu kapa, hayatua, lebe kapara, in the name of Jesus. Sit down. Let's go. Do There are great men who have left their businesses to people. But because the people did not inherit their spirit, the venture is dying in their hands. Where's the church of Benson Hosa? You can inherit his church as a son, but you possess his spirit. Am I speaking to people? Yeah, yeah. He said, you have asked a hard day. Nevertheless, if you see me, when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened. As they continued on and talked, that suddenly the chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. It means that in the time of life, they were separated. It means that Elijah is no much more with the living. It means that when God is counting living beings at this point in time, spirit beings have come for that man. In other words, Elijah can no more be numbered with men. So it says that then suddenly a child of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up. That is a rapture. He went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Continue. And Elijah saw it and he cried out, My father, my father, 
The chariot of Israel and its horsemen is the same language Joash cried him. And he was opportune because he was crying that to a man who is about to die. So it means that Joash had the opportunity to inherit the spirit of Elijah. Do you know that after the passing of Elisha, nobody in such a long time could walk in this spirit until John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elisha. If Elisha possessed the spirit of Elijah, then John the Baptist equally came in the spirit of Elisha. Joash had the lingo. He had the lingo. He read somewhere that when Elijah was about to die, Elisha said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen. We are a generation that know how to see all the right things. How many conferences have you gone to and you heard people with mics say, give me England or I die. Give me Scotland or I die. Give me Holland or I die. They, have, they are learning the lingo of a man that lived without the spirit of that man. <laughs> because it makes you sound powerful to hold a conference, to hold a mic and say, Give me London or I die. Let one principality come to you, and your prayer will be, Take London, so I leave. A generation. They know how to speak all the right words, but don't mean it. A generation that reads about the generals, but they don't inherit their spirit. Educated generation. Very well spoken generation. Joash was like that. He could utter the same phrase of Elisha. To a dying Elijah. But Joash could not possess the spirit of a dying Elijah. It's such a shame that when Elijah died, even his grave could wake dead men back to life. It means that God carried so much power, he took it to the grave. Because nobody in his generation was willing to go the walk. May God make you a chaser. Oh my goodness. I said, may God make you a chaser. Amen. So he saw him no man. He took out of his glove and tore them into pieces. Continue. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen upon him and he went back and he stood by. So it means that, please watch this. He also took that word also. Oh, come on, talk to me. It means Elijah did not just take a mantle. He also he also took up the mantle of Elijah. The mantle that had matured. He also took up that mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the river. Second king. Elisha had become sick with the illness which would, with which he will die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down and wept over his face. I never see Elisha crying. He's telling Elijah, it's not the emo emotional business. Just give me your spirit. When you listen to me all the time, you may think that I'm trying to make you unemotional. No, emotions are by God. You can, if you don't have emotions, you don't live. All I'm trying to say is that control these emotions. It's called self-control. Nim, do you understand what I'm saying? All I'm saying, I'm, I'm not saying hey, every day. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not saying don't have it. I have emotions. If not, I can't marry. 
my emotions are high. They are high. My emotions are peak. I'm a man with blood in my veins. I feel. I love. I'm a hard lover. I cry. You just don't see it. I get tired. Sometimes I want to give up. Sometimes I'm too happy. Sometimes I'm too sad. I have it. But I've gained mastery over these emotions. Some of you think self-control, oh my gosh, I want to have sex. Oh, I will not have sex. I will not have sex. I have self-control. No. Self-control say, get up when you don't feel like. Pray when you don't want to. Leave your room going to the shower when you don't feel like it's self-control. Move out there when you don't feel like it's self-control. Put your hand back in your pocket when you want to slap. Smile when you want to cast. Self-control says, control your emotions. Let it not stop you from doing what you have to do. There are some of you, you don't fornicate and because of that you think you have self-control, you're a joker. The, all, the litmus test for self-control is not only sexual appeal. So Paul teaches us, he said, one thing I do, I beat my body. That's self-control. He said, I put it under subjection. Lest after I've preached to others, I myself would become a castaway. Paul is saying that one of the places I exercise self-control grace is so that I don't go to hell. Paul didn't say I exercise self-control so that I will not sleep with Mary Magdalene. If you are still procrastinating from doing the thing you listed in January, you don't have self-control. Where is Daniel? What did I tell you in the office today? I was a dead man. Oh, guys, I was a dead man. So I'm, you saw me the way I came to sit here. I was a finished man. But my emotions have never told me what to do in life. I crossed that bridge a long time ago. Long time. Long Because what must be done, must be done. If Elijah does not go on the journey, what will become of Elijah? When you recognize your journey goes beyond you, you recognize that any time I sit down to let my emotions have control over me, I'm denying that David his coronation. So the Lord came to Saul and said, how long would you mourn after Saul? He came to Samuel. He said, get up. Fill your horn with oil. I've chosen for me a king in the house of Jesse. Go on. In other words, cut the funeral short. Cut the crying short. Cut the weeping short. Even weeping is only meant to endure for a night. You've cried two days is enough. You've cried one week is enough. The longest God has permitted it. Weeping may endure for a night. May God raise a generation. That one day are weeping, they will still run. When they are crying, they will still run. When they are laughing, they will still run. When somebody falls, they will still run. When somebody is lifted, they will still run. May God raise a generation that don't know how to stop.
tell the Lord, let my emotions not stop me. Let it not. Let it not. Let it not. Let it not stop me. Let it not. Let it not. Let it not. Sit down. He wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, a chariot of Israel. <laughs> On Monday morning, I was, I was taking Joel to school. And my wife, Patience, told me, there's no milk for Ivana. So I said, let me rush to Sainsbury's and grab milk, give it to Patience, take Joel to school, and let me head to the gym. I grabbed this thing. Joel is sitting at the front of the car. I just left. I was driving. I had to bam! Another car just whacked. My car was completely it was, it was destroyed. The day before my brother had called me and said, our older sister is dead. I called somebody. I said, come collect Joel. Take him to school. He collected him. I waited. I did all of the things. I had rounds to do. I called Henry. I said, Henry, drive from Milton Keynes. Today my car is gone. I'm doing all my rounds with you. Henry drove down. I said, the fact that my car is whacked, it's not an indication that the itinerary of the day shouldn't continue. I said, take this fuel card, buy fuel. You are my chauffeur today. We have, I don't have time to reel over a sport car. The work of God must continue. The dead will bury the dead. The work of God must continue. We just moved. As if nothing has happened. I left the car there. You've taken the car. Devil, I will still go where I have to go. <laughs> Do you understand? The people designated for me to meet on that day, I will. With setbacks on this journey doesn't stop us. Ha, we want to be too stubborn. The devil. Ha, look, I want the devil to give up on me. Like this guy, nothing you do. Let's just give up. I said, Henry, you're my chauffeur. Let's go. Everything I needed to do from church building in Hackney to this to that, everything was done. I did not have one hour to weep. Like Nehemiah, I'm building such a great work. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Some of you were there. He came later. I had a meeting. I didn't cancel my meeting with him because I've, I've had an accident. No. We did everything. I cannot delay this guy, his counsel, because I've had a setback in the morning. The devil would have to give up on us. Amen. Because you see, you see, you see, whatever you bring our way, until we get to the destination, nothing will stop us on the way. Amen. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. So, Joash has the language. He doesn't have the attitude. He has the language, but he does not have spirit. May you not just be quoting what great men said. May you actually inherit the spirit of this man. Take me back to 2 Kings 2, where we are. Take me to where Elisha goes. Elijah goes. Next one. The next one, watch this. He also took up the mantle of Lajada falling from me and went back and stood by the river bank of the Jordan. Continue. 
Then he took the mantle of Elijah that he had fallen flat, had fallen from, and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided. I love that thing. And when he also. <laughs> In other words, Elisha's name has been added to the men that parted the Jordan. When he also. You also will take the nations. Uh, you also, what you started, you shall complete. I, I'm prophesying. You also would leave a legacy. You also would become, you would become a necessary tool in this kingdom. You also, people will read about you. Oh my God, my God. You also will leave an inheritance. You also will cross the Jordan. You also will build in this life. You also would be married and stay married. You also would have godly children. You, it means you will not be an exception to those who succeeded. You also. Oh my goodness. My God. He said, and he also. And Randolph also. And Becca also. And Ora also. And Tatiana also. And Eliud also. And Daniel also. And Nelson also. Me also. And he also. It speaks of Jesus that he also, when he got into the Jordan, as he prayed, and the heavens were open, and the Spirit of the Lord, and he also. Can I speak of our generation? We also shall be great. Can I speak about our generation? We also will walk in miracles, signs, and wonders. It will not just be about Catherine Coleman. It will not just be about Benson in the Hosa. Can I speak of our generation? We also will take the cities for our God. We also will take the nations for our God. We also will take the continent for our God. We also will take nations for our God. We also. We also. We also. We also. <laughs> I love that statement. And he also. It means Elisha's name is added to the hall of fame. Of the men that carried so much power that they parted waters. It was not just Moses. It was not just Elijah. It was not just Jesus. Elisha also. Oh my goodness. Can I speak over somebody? You also. Hayakatana bakapa. Can I, can I speak of myself? You also. Oh, it will not just be the man you read. You also will do it. You also will accomplish it. You also shall go there. You also shall be there. You also shall see it. You also shall hold it. He also. He also. He also. He also. He also. The guy who was not one of the sons of the prophet, he also. There's a place you journey to and, and you close your ears to all discouragement. You return with the term, he also. Elisha had earned the right. The Jordan recognized him. He also struck the water and it was divided this way and that and Elijah ah, not Elijah not Moses ah, no no not Jesus and Elijah crossed over our generation will cross over look look we will not be the generation that will let this kingdom down the gospel will not die with us. We also shall preserve the integrity of this gospel. We also will preserve the power of this gospel. No, 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 no. no. It will not die with us. And he also. Christ. 15. 
watch this. Look at, look at these guys now. Now when? Now when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, not the mantle. It tells you what Elisha was looking for. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Talk to me. The spirit of Elias rest on Elijah. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. There's something when it happens to you. <laughs> There's a certain place, Obafemi, when you get to the people that were lecturing you, the people that thought they were accurate. There's a certain place when, when you get to the, the professors of theology those who knows hermeneutics and homiletics, those who have possessed PPHDs, what? there's a certain place when you, you see, people don't follow you because of where you're going to. They follow you because of where you are coming from. You didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. You did not hear what I said. You are not followed because of where you're going to. You are followed because of where you're coming from. Because you see, when people take you as a leader, they don't follow you because you are finding out. People follow a leader because you've gone to see the place and you are coming back to carry them there. Leadership is taking men where you have been. Yeah, yeah. The, the people in my group don't respect me. They see where you are going. They've not seen where you are coming from. It's not where you are going. Because you can tell us where you are going and not get there. But if you, the, the woman at the well came to tell the city, he said, I have met a man. He didn't say, I'm going to meet a man. He said, I have met a man who told me everything I have done. The people didn't care whether she was a woman, a prostitute, a divorcee, I mean a divorce, 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 divorcee. When you carry and you know the way, people don't care what your status yes. is. Stop proving a point. Get there. We will follow you. Yes. Oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. Stop. 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 Stop defending yourself. When we see where you've come from, we will follow you. People want to motivate people to follow them in the destination they are going to find out. Yeah. Oh. All of a sudden, they were not prophesying. The spirit of Elijah on Elisha had humbled them. They couldn't say, that sees the Lord again. They came to meet him and bow to the ground before him. And look at what they say. And they said to him, look now. There are 50 strong men. Not weaklings. There are 50 strong men with your servant. Please let them go and search for your master. Lest perhaps the spirit of the Lord has taken him. Foolish men. They are looking for a dead man. Don't be that guy who chases things once he's gone. Elijah was with you. You didn't follow him. Now you've seen that his spirit was on Elisha. is an indication he's gone. Now, they, they went to Elisha and said, let us go and search for your master. Lest perhaps the spirit of the Lord has taken him and cast him upon some mountain or some valley. And, 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 and he said, you shall not send anyone. Look at what happened here. But when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, send them. He knows they would not find anything. Therefore, they sent 50 men and they sent three days for him but they did not find him. The guy is gone. Look at 18. And when they came back to him for he stayed in Jericho, he said to them, did I say not to you, do not go? Look at what happened. Then the men of the city said to Elisha, please notice the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord said, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. They create an opportunity for Elisha to perform his second miracle. Do you know why? Because the spirit of Elijah is upon him. The spirit of Yahweh is upon you. Amen. Can I tell you something? 
Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? The spirit of Elijah is inferior. Oh, look at you. Thank God for the spirit of Catherine Kuman. Thank God for the spirit of Benson Idahosa. Thank God for the spirit of John Knox. Thank God for the spirit of Smith Wigglesworth. But their spirits are inferior. God has not just given us the spirits of these men. The holiest of all spirits. Ruach HaKodesh. Ruach Elohim. The Ruach of God. Jesus said, it is good for you that I go. But if I go, the spirit of the higher shall overshadow you. So in the upper room, they did not receive the spirit of Elijah. They did not receive the spirit of Moses. They did not receive the spirit of Elijah. They received the spirit of Jesus himself. They received the Holy Ghost. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. If Elijah, with the spirit of Elijah, could make a bad water taste good and a barren ground become fertile, oh, we have what it takes. We have. We echo men. We echo men. We possess. We possess. If the spirit of Elijah could part waters oh we hold the spirit that brings solution if the spirit of Elijah if the spirit of Elijah my God my God could bring back the son of the Shunammite women we possess the spirit of Jesus we possess the spirit of Yahweh we possess the spirit of Elohim Ayakata Lopo Kosaya. Paul said to the church in Rome, he said, if the spirit that rose Jesus from the grave, Ayata. He said, if the spirit that rose Jesus from the grave, he said, if that same spirit, if that Saya Bakuntala Fentalia Kupaya Kapatua Apostle, he said, if the spirit that rose Jesus from the grave, he said, if that same spirit dwells in you he said will that not same spirit metamorphose revitalize your mortal bodies the writer of hebrews said if the blood of goats and bulls and heifers was able to cleanse he said how much more shall the blood of jesus walking through the eternal spirit Working through the eternal spirit, working through the eternal spirit, not cleanse your conscience from dead works that you may be able to serve the living man. Ah! Ah! Yeah! for the spirit of Elijah I carry the spirit of Jesus I carry the spirit of Jesus thank God I carry I carry I carry Payatalabakapai Ilabakatalabahataya Makunde breka para moshana. Thank God for the spirit of Idahosa. I carry a much more superior spirit, the Holy Ghost. 
the Holy Ghost he said when the Spirit comes he shall teach you all things not some things all things all things all things looking for the spirit of Elijah. I echo man the spirit of Elohim. There is no inferior Holy Ghost. He's the spirit of the highest. Mary asked Gabriel, how can this be? He said, the spirit of the highest will overshadow you. It is only the spirit of the highest that can allow the virgin to be with a child. My God. My God. My God. Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Take the spirit of Elijah and give me the Holy Ghost. Take the spirit of Moses and give me the Holy Ghost. Take the spirit of Paul and give me Holy Ghost. Take you forever. Take the spirit of Elijah and give me the Holy Ghost. of the spirit of Elijah. Holy 
It is inferior. We have inherited a much more excellent spirit. If Elisha did all this with the spirit of Elijah, how much more? Let us not waste the Holy Ghost. Let us not waste the Holy Ghost. Let us not waste the Holy Ghost. You will subdue kingdoms with the Holy Ghost. You will tear the mouth of lions with the Holy Ghost. You will part waters with the Holy Ghost. You will divide the spoil with the Holy Ghost. You will run some nations with the Holy Ghost. You will heal the sick with the Holy Ghost. You shall raise the dead with the Holy Ghost. You will convert hearts with the Holy Ghost. You will subdue minds with the Holy Ghost. We will not waste the Holy Ghost. For we have inherited a much more excellent spirit. Sit down. Continue for me. With the spirit of Elijah. Elijah. He asked for a bowl, put salt in it. He put it in the waters. And the waters were made clean. Do you know that according to Revelation 17, the woman sat upon the waters. And the Bible says, and the waters were nations. They were people. Elisha would put salt in the water. Jesus said, you are the salt. Go talk to me. Talk to me. You are a salt Jesus has put into the water. Elisha put salt in the water and the bad water became good. Jesus said you are the salt of the earth. You will not lose your saltiness. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. The, Elliot, the water there is not River Thames. <laughs> the water there is not the Nile. The water there is people. The people of London. The people of Kingston. The people of Hatfield. Oh, talk to me. The people of London. Talk to me. I am a salt put into the water. I am a salt drop into London. I am a salt drop into Manchester. I am a salt drop into Hatfield. When, when the Lord puts me there, I'm a salt in the water of my family. When the Lord puts me there, what is bad becomes good. What is bitter becomes sweet. What is destroyed is preserved. I am so put into the waters. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water and cast the salt in there and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From it, there shall be no more death or barrenness. Can I speak to you? You are sold in the hands of the Lord. And that says the Lord, a salt dropped into the water of your family. Because of you, there shall be no death. I said, because of you, there shall be no death. Because you are sold in the water. Because of you, there shall be no barrenness. Because of you, there shall be no diseases. Because of you, there shall be no destruction. Why? Because you are sold, put into the water. Oh, my God. Can I speak to somebody? You are God's healing soul. 
You will heal your mother. You will heal your father. You will heal your brothers and sisters. Can I speak to you? You will heal your city. You will heal your nation. You will heal your community. You are the salt of the Lord in the midst of the waters. Look for that scripture for me. It's Revelation 17 or Revelation 13, one of them. He said she sat upon the waters and said, he said, the waters are nations and tribes and people. Look for that for me. So that you understand that we are talking about something much more than water. Revelation 17. That he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are people. Multitude. Nations. And tongues. And Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. So if Elijah asked for salt to put it in the midst of the waters, God asked for me, the salt of the earth, to put me in the midst of the waters, which are people, which are multitude, which are nations, and which are tongues. Can I tell you something? You are a solution to the UK. Uh, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Can I talk to you? You are you a are solution for your city. Who am I talking to? You are solutions for your family. You are God preservative mechanism. Because of you, there shall be no barrenness. Because of you, there will be no death. If the angel of death comes into the family, and he sees you there, he shall pass over the family because you are so in the midst of the waters. Sit down. Do you not love the Holy Ghost? All the things I'm teaching now is things he's teaching me one second before I speak. It's not on notes. I am sold in the midst of the waters. Ah, ah. I'm dropped in there. Ah, yeah. They dropped me into that family. Some of you don't like your family. Uh, this family, why am I here? You know, you know, why can't I have, you know, a, why can't I have a good family like all the other people? Because you you are sold. Your saltiness will not be relevant in a good family. They are good or red. Oh my God. My family is messed up. That's why I'm there. Oh, London is messed up. That is why KC is here. Oh, I'm asking to somebody. Oh, it looks so bad. That is why I came. Jesus said, he said, I've been sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Do you understand? It is so bad that God needed me. It is so bad that God looked over all the earth and said, Ore Oluwa Adesanya. Why would, how can you be salt in a place that is good? Somebody said, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. My family is bad. It's obvious, you know. That is why I was born in there. Because of me, there will be no death. And because of me, there shall be no parents. Ah. It's so bad. So God called for a bow. Like Elijah. Put the salt in it. That was me. Went to the waters. That was my family. And dropped me there. <laughs> and it shall be that because I am dead there shall be no death there shall be no am I speaking to some the better it is the more relevant my salt is 
they said hackney is terrible we are coming there thank god they didn't send us to cambridge bring us to hackney and see us turn the economy around see us turn the men around see us turn the women around see us turn the situation around we are like so drop in the middle of the waters They said our generation is lost. That is where we came. Thank God they did not birth me in the time of William Seymour. Thank God I was not in the days of Catherine Coleman. Since the days of Catherine Coleman. Since the days of William Seymour. Thank God it will be said since the days of Randolph A.J. Thank God it will be said since the days of Obafemi. Since the days of Enoch. Since the days of Sam. Thank God that the story would be written since the death of Daniela. Oh, and the youth are going away from the church and there's no power in the church. Welcome to KAC. We are salt. We are salt in the midst of the waters. And because of us, there shall be no death. There shall be no barrenness. Sit down. Sit down. I'll finish in 15 minutes. Take me back to 13, 2 Kings 13, 14. Second Kings 13, not 2. God give us the resilience of Elijah. May we possess the resilience of Elijah. Elijah had become sick. With the illness which he will die. Then Joash. May we be delivered from the Joash generation. Then Joash the king of Israel came down to him. Wept over his face. And said, oh! My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen. And Elijah said to him, take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. Look at how Elisha He's making life easy for this guy. Elijah wouldn't even talk to Elisha. He would turn to him and say, why are you following me? Go back. Elisha wants to make the exam too easy. He's given him. He says, so, so he said to him, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on the bow. And Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. <laughs> Elisha is literally pulling it with him. You see the heart of Elisha that he's a guy who wants to give this spirit and mantle so easily. There are people even the easier test they are failing. That's why he would say, he said, if you're struggling to, to run with footmen, some people even with footmen, they are struggling. There are some tests God has given us. It is the easiest. And even with that, we are failing. So he put his hands on the king's hands, 17. And he said, open the east window. Easy. He opened it. Then Elijah said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And the arrow of deliverance from Syria. You must strike the Syrians at Athek till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you, have struck, you should have struck five. You see, the first test was shoot the arrow. The second test was strike the ground. Gilgal. Jericho, Jordan. You 
you've passed the test of shooting through the window to the east. It is easier that you have come to the test of striking the ground. He struck it three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry. Elisha is angry because he has made the test easy. Some of the fathers are angry. Because no matter how they make the test easy for our generation, we are still complaining. We are still. Said so you should have struck five or six. As soon as Elisha stops, Joash stops. Joash does not have the, the resilience to continue. He doesn't know what it means to pursue till the end. He said you should have continued. Somebody, God said continue. God sent me to tell somebody, you fasted three days, you should have fasted for five days. You did seven days, the Lord said it should have been 14. He said you should have struck five or six then you would have struck Syria till you are destroyed. But now you strike only three times. Then Elisha died. No transfer of spirits, no transfer of mantle. The Jewish generation gets tired easily. The Jewish generation don't have resilience. They can't pursue to the end. They're on fire in January. They restart in February. They go to a conference. They are fired up. Three months. They stop the midnight prayer. And Elisha is saying to them, Why did you stop? Why did you stop praying? Why did you stop sacrificing? Why did you stop giving? Why have you stopped the fasting? You fasted every week on your day of birth. What happened? You used to read four chapters a day. What happened? The Jewish generation are not afraid of starting because there are people with them. But when it comes to the place where they are alone, they stop. So the Elijahs are angry because they are taking the mantle to the grave. And Elisha died and they buried him. And the raiding band from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as they were burying a man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Tonight, may God go to the graveyards and find every grace that is buried. Every grace that is buried. From Kenneth Hagen to Miles Monroe. From Catherine Kuhlman to William Seymour. From Emmy McPherson to Marvin Luther. From John Don Knox to the Phoenix. Any grace languishing at the grave because a generation refused to take it. May God carry it in this room right now. Right here, right now. May every deposit of fire in the bones of Elijah not go to waste. Malubreke pavatolo boko pasa, Rebecca paroba atala bakapaya, Lebre kopante lebre kapaya suta, Zavata la kovatos, Paruski vatalia sote, Alumba kuparasa, Vreko raba vanta, 
let every grace languishing in the tomb of holy man let it find expression upon us right now in the name of Jesus sit down I'm closing in five minutes May you not be part of the generation that shrinks back. What do you start, you will finish. Amen. I love the scripture. I said, he said, we are not like those who fall back. He said, we are not like those who draw back. It means there are certain people, they draw back. He said, we are not like those. Look for that scripture for me. Look at that scripture. He said, we are not like those who draw back. We are not like those who shrink back. It means that there is certain... Look, he said that. But we are not like those who draw back. It means there are people who are called those who draw back. They are the people that take steps and they go back. He said, we are not like them. You are not like them. I said, you are not like them. Amen. He said, they draw back to perdition destruction. We are not like them. We are not like the Joah's generation. We belong to the group of the Elishas. part of those who draw back. Tell yourself, I'm not part of those who draw back. Tell yourself, I finish what I start. prophecy saying that men and women in this generation would fail. You are not part of them. Amen. 
I said, if there is a prophecy that people in this generation, they don't finish what they start, you are not part of them.
prophecy over you to that word over your life to that city you are called to to that people you are called to where are you where are you Not like those who draw back. By our God, we would run against the truth. We will leap over walls. We will climb mountains. We will journey through valleys. From Gilgal to Bethel. From Bethel to Jericho. From the Jericho to the Jordan. We are not like those who draw back. Here I am, here I am. Lift up your toe. I am the salt they are waiting for. Tell yourself, I am the salt for the waters. Tell yourself, I am the salt for the bad waters. Apostle Lobby, it means put me where it is bad. It will become good. I am graced to change things. Here I am, here I am. salt for the bad waters. Say Holy Spirit make me the salt for the bad waters. Talk to him. Make me the salt for the bad waters.
I don't want to be the salt for the good waters. You are simply telling the Lord, make me a solution. That is what this prayer means. Make me a solution. That is what the prayer means. Salt for the bad waters. Make me a solution in this generation. Watch this. Exodus 15 23. Exodus 15. Now, when they had come to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara. For they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses. Saying what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree. The man who Jesus restored his vision. He, he asked him. He said what do you say? He said I see men. So the Lord showed him a tree. God will show a generation a man. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. God will show your generation a man who possesses solution. That man is you. And the Lord showed him a tree. God will show this generation a tree. That tree is you. And the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statue of ordinance for them. And there he tested them. There are certain people who are created for bad waters. I'm not called for the good waters. Jesus came. He said, I was came for the lost sheep of Israel. He said, he said, good people don't need doctors. I'm not here for easy situations. I am the very man or woman my family needs. <laughs> I am the man my generation needs. I am salt in the midst of the waters. I am like a tree in the midst of the waters. Tonight, God is going to give you the grace not to run from bad situations. The grace to change bad situation into good has come upon your life. Say, Lord, make me salt for the bad waters. You were, you were called for this generation. You are a salt for the bad waters. If they find good men, they are not for you. Let them bring bad situations. You are called to change it. That is my life. That is my life. <laughs> Nobody remembers a man in the midst of a good man. No remember a good man in the midst of good men. People remember a good man in the midst of bad men who have the capacity to make bad men good men. 
That will be your story. I said, that will be your story. I said, that will be your story. That would be your story. But you know the secret of Elisha? He know how to chase. May that relentless spirit come upon you. Beginning from tonight, nothing will stop you on the way. Oh, I said nothing will stop you on the way. I said nothing will stop you on the way. Whatever you set your mind to do, you shall do. Wherever you move your feet to go, you will get there. Whatever your hand starts, it will complete it. Tonight, I came to speak over somebody's life. That the journey you have begun, you will end it. It will not be said of you, he or she started and didn't complete. That will never be your story. We are like Elijah. We are not like the men who draw back. We are like the men that know how to journey until the end. It shall be your portion. I said it shall be your portion. It would be your portion forever and ever. Clap your hands and shout amen. I said shout amen. I said shout amen. I said shout amen. We have closed. Put the offering thing on there. Look, give an offering. Scan that QR code. Don't be in these type of meetings and not give. There's going to be a card machine at the back. Give an offering. Don't be in such a meeting and don't give. Here we come, here we come. Don't be in this meeting and not give. share the grace. Now tell somebody you are like salt in the mist of bad waters. God bless you. Shalom.